A community is demanding answers after they say a murder in their Land Park neighborhood could have been prevented. 61 year old Kate Tibbetts and her two dogs were killed in their home over the weekend. Investigators say Troy Davis killed them and then set the house on fire. Now this isn't Davis's first run in with the law. In fact, he was just released from jail a few months ago and now the community wants to know why he was able to go free in the first place given his violent criminal history. It's completely uh, you know, disturbing to all of us. Um, I am concerned about the, the public safety aspect of this. We're just incredibly sad for her family and her neighbors and really want to ensure that the community knows we're taking this very seriously. Take care of the folks who well, Sacramento City Council member Katie Valenzuela calling this a worst case scenario, saying that the criminal justice system is broken. Well, we've been digging into why this suspect was out of jail in the first place, despite his violent past. Prosecutors say Davis was released from prison last year after serving time for assault with a deadly weapon and robbery. Then he was arrested again this summer for an auto theft case. City leaders are asking why he was released from custody. So a lot to walk through here today, but Case Harry 3's Brandy Cummings has been looking into this a deep dive and looking for answers, and she joins us now from the newsroom. Yeah, so Golston Edie, you know, there's a lot of questions about this. So here's what we do know. Davis was arrested in Elk Grove on June 18th, charged with a vehicle theft, which in California is considered a nonviolent offense and thus eligible for release under Sacramento County's emergency bail schedule. Davis was booked into the Sacramento County Jail and released on his own recognizance with a signed promise to return for his court hearing, but he didn't show up for his June 22nd arraignment. A bench warrant was then issued for Davis. He was then arrested again on Saturday for a parole violation. A day later, he was charged with murder, arson, burglary and sexual assault. Davis also has a felony record of assault with a deadly weapon and robbery. We contacted several agencies trying to find out why Davis was released. No one from the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office was available for an interview today, but a spokesman told me over the phone the parole schedule and the criteria for what's considered violent or nonviolent crime is created by the court. A spokesperson from the Elk Grove Police Department told us a parole hold was not required requested. However, Davis's parole status would have been known during the booking process and court proceedings. A suspect's parole status does not automatically mean a parole hold will be granted or that a parolee will be held. We also contacted the district attorney's office who sent us a statement that said, quote, the DA's office is not involved in setting of bail on arrest. As a general rule, the DA's office becomes involved when the individual appears in court at arraignment. We also contacted the Superior Court. They said the court relies on law enforcement to conduct criminal background checks on all defendants who are booked on a fresh arrest in order to make the appropriate release from custody determinations. We also contacted the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. That's the agency that oversees parole officers. A spokesperson told us they cannot comment on an ongoing investigation. So today I sat down with Assembly Member Jim Cooper and I asked him if a parolee does get booked on a nonviolent offense, what should happen? Well, number one, the judge should take a look at it and see, hey, what, what are his priors? So what we've seen is folks released without those being checked because of these current policies. So that's really been the disconnect. Who would have been responsible, though, for making sure that he wasn't released? I think, I think uh, blame can be spread around to a, to a number of people. It's not just one thing. A Sacramento County Sheriff spokesperson says a records official in the jail would have looked at the bail schedule. Again, remember, that's created by the court, and that person would have determined that based on Davis's June 18th charge, he was eligible for a zero bail release. That bail schedule does not take into account any prior offenses. And of note here, a judge does not have to sign off on a defendant's release under the zero bail policy. For now, live in the newsroom, I'm Brandy Cummings, KCRA 3 News. All right, Brandy, thank you for the explanation.